Hi, welcome to the final video in the series Forgiveness Fallacies. Today we're looking at the fallacy that forgiveness is a long journey. I will start off by saying with spiritual healing, it is never a long journey. It is always an instantaneous, immediate shift. Nonetheless, I realize where the idea that forgiveness is a long journey comes from. It comes from our attempt to forgive using willpower. So I have heard stories about people who have forgiven, who have forgiven others because um, every day they would practice forgiving them. Okay, so they would sort of draw their attention away from their pain or their anger and they would refocus it on wishing the person well. You know, like imagining the person in God's light or praying for them or, or, you know, just saying something simple like, I hope they have a good breakfast today, just wishing well for them. And over time, that intentional shifting of energy was able to reduce the negative feelings, reduce the anger and the pain, and they became compassionate towards that person. So that is one way of doing forgiveness. It does take willpower and it takes time and it takes kind of constant intention. I would also suggest that even though it might seem to work, <laughs> that one of the problems with that is it's basing its action on denial. So you're, you're saying, maybe I'm in pain, but I'm going to not focus on that and focus on something else, which means you're no longer maybe paying attention to the pain, but that doesn't mean the pain is gone. So um, I've met with people who really thought they'd forgiven things in their lives and then 30 years later, they have this chronic health condition and it's attached to that thing that they thought they had forgiven. They were successful in diverting their attention and, and maybe going along in relationship with that person and they felt as though it was released, but they did so by ignoring the initial pain. So that would be one version of the long journey of forgiveness. It can be effective to a degree, but I, I think there are limitations. For one thing, because not, not all of us can do that. Not all of us have that level of willpower to every day refocus our attention. I'm one of them. I couldn't do that. Uh, but also because I'm not sure it completely solves the problem. So as opposed to that long journey of forgiveness, when we come to forgiveness from spiritual healings perspective, it is instantaneous. You know, there's this passage in the Christian Bible which talks about how time doesn't, it's not the same to God as it is to us. You know, God, for God, one day can be a thousand years or a thousand years can be a day. Basically explaining that although on the earthly level we experience time as linear, that is not the way time is experienced on the spiritual level. In fact, time doesn't even really exist, which means from the spiritual level, from our soul's perspective, things can happen in an instant. Things that seem really big and difficult for us are immediately cleared. Now, the reason why we might not experience spiritual clearing is not because the healing is not possible, but it's always about whether we're ready for the healing. That is always the problem, or it's not the problem. It's always the limitation. Um, so the reason we might not be open to healing is first of all, we might be holding a grudge. Okay, we might decide that we are not ready to forgive somebody because they don't deserve to be forgiven. <laughs> okay, and the theory behind that is I'm going to hold myself in the position of maintaining justice. So somehow, because I'm not going to forgive them, I'm going to rebalance the equation. And when I'm done balancing the equation, I will forgive them. Um, the fallacy there is that we are really not in the position to create justice or to balance the equation. That's something that is kind of a cosmic responsibility. So you can hold that responsibility if you would like, but you will discover that you're not in a position to, to accomplish it. So it, there is a limitation to being in human form, and that's one of them. The second reason we might not be ready to forgive is because we think that there is a lesson in our pain. We think that there's something about the situation that we need to hold on to in order to become better people. Now, we actually hear this idea repeated a lot in our culture that pain is 
a gift. It's a teacher. Um, we get stronger because we walk through pain or, uh, you know, there's a lot of like that pain is a good thing. It's your constant companion. So you can't get rid of it. You're just going to learn to walk with it. And as you walk with it, you get to be stronger or a better people. So I will, and that's a belief system that you can have. You're in charge of your life. Um, but I will say that belief system will, will make pain a constant companion. You're, you're writing the life that you want. So if that's what you believe and you believe pain is valuable, and then you're going to hold on to it. And even if someone offers you healing, um, you're not going to accept it because it will take away something that you think is valuable to you, which is pain. From the perspective of spiritual healing, though, the way I understand it, pain is not the teacher. It's just the catalyst to the lesson. You have pain because it's telling you something is wrong. So instead of focusing on the pain, we say, oh, what's the pain showing me? Okay. And then you move into the lesson. And once you get clear on what the pain was showing you, you can make the adjustments you need to make. You can change patterns that are sort of hurting you or other people. And, and then once the lesson is learned, the pain goes away. That's what spiritual healing is. So it's actually so, so simple, but it really is difficult because our minds make it complicated. Our minds tend to not want us to change. And learning these lessons is a form of change. In fact, it's transformative. You become a different person when you start following your soul's leading instead of holding the status quo. So the mind is very antsy around us making these changes. That's why the mind tries to convince us that the pain is a good thing. Um, because if you can focus on the pain instead of the solution, that will keep you distracted. Now, as I said before, you're in charge of your life. You get to pick the life that you want. And if you think that pain is good for you, that it create, makes you noble, it makes you compassionate, then that is fine. <laughs> you know, everything is a choice. But Try not to fall into the trap of believing that you don't have a choice. Try to acknowledge that this it's okay for you to choose the path that you want, but it is your path. And that you could choose something different if you want. Um, I want to close this with this idea that we struggle with so mightily as human beings. And it comes up in multiple religions. I just have been raised in the Judeo-Christian tradition. So for me, I connect it more to the teachings in the Bible, but it's the idea of unconditional love. You know, we really struggle as human beings to believe that unconditional love belongs to us. You know, we, <laughs> so when the Bible says, for example, that God loves us unconditionally, we create conditions. We say, well, God loves you if you are baptized, if you believe a certain thing, if you take communion the right way, okay, or if you pray a certain way. We create conditions because it's so hard for us to believe that we are loved regardless of anything we do. It doesn't matter what you do. You are beloved. You get to make your choices because you are beloved. You get to have the life that you want because you are beloved. And you can completely make choices that I would never agree with and you're still beloved. It doesn't matter. You're not in charge of whether you're beloved. Okay? When you start accepting that, if you decide to, you discover that forgiveness is just par for the course with everybody else. They're beloved too. It doesn't matter how rude they were to you, how hurtful they were. It doesn't matter how much they violated or betrayed you. They are beloved as well. And that's how it works. And I can't make choices about what they do or what they don't do. I just get to choose whether I allow the universal love or love of God to come into my life. And the more that I do that, the freer I am to learn my lessons and move forward without pain. Thank you for joining me for this final video in this Forgiveness Fallacy series. I hope you'll join me for my next series, which will start next week. See you then. Bye.